Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, January 31st, 2021. I'm Relay Reader Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link underneath uh, this video in the descriptions on Facebook and on YouTube, or on our website, www.centralpresspb.com, where you can click the publications link, scroll down to you see today's date, and download the PDF uh, for today's worship service. Uh, you can view that PDF on your mobile device or you can print it out, it's a PDF, and then you can follow along with the service. Now that you have your bulletins, uh, I invite you to, uh, to turn your attention, excuse me, to the announcements found on the back of your bulletin. Uh, the next Presbytery of Arkansas meeting will be held virtually on March 5th and 6th. If you're in interested in watching or, um, <laughs> or um, viewing the sir the um meeting please let the church office know via uh, email at office at centralpresspb.com or on social media using our uh, username central Press PB. archives of our online services can be found on facebook and on youtube links to each are on our website centralpresspb.com <clears throat> now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the lord we give thanks to God with all your heart. We come full of awe at God's marvelous works. Give thanks to God with all your mind. We come to learn God's wisdom and righteousness. Give thanks to God with all your strength. We come to live in God's mercy and grace. Let us worship God with all that we are. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Now join us in the prayer of confession, first in unison using the prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Merciful God, your pardon, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now let us turn our attention to Rose von Tenglin for this week's children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. Hi, I've heard some of y'all had a big week this week. I heard that two of y'all lost a tooth this week. Y'all are just growing up so fast. By the time I see you, you'll probably be a teenager. Well, hopefully not, but anyway. Today, I have a remote control in my hand. Do you know what this remote control does? That's right, it turns on the TV. It can turn the TV off. It can change the volume on the TV. It can change the channels on the TV. But you know what? Normally, whoever is in control of the remote is in control of the TV, aren't they? Yeah. But today, I want to tell you about a time when Jesus was in control. He had gone to the synagogue to preach one Sunday, one Sabbath day. <clears throat> and there was a man there. And the man had an evil spirit in him. And the evil spirit called out to Jesus. Hey, you, I know what you're doing here. You're the holy man of God, and you're here to cause trouble. And Jesus told the evil spirit in the man to be quiet and to come out of the man. And guess what? The evil spirit came out of the man. And that man's life was changed forever because he no longer had an evil spirit in him controlling him. Now, the people were amazed that Jesus had such control 
over something like that. I mean, even the evil spirits did what he said. But you know, God wants to be in control of our life too. And the way God can do that, or Jesus can do that, is by us letting Jesus into our heart and letting Jesus teach us how to, what to say, how to behave, and things that we can do to help others. So remember, when you have the remote control, you may be in control of the TV, but Jesus can be in control of your life. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we ask today that you will help us to let you be in control of our lives, that we will do the right things and say the right things and help others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Rose. And now we'll turn our attention to Reverend Tim Reeves with this week's sermon, A Doorway to Life in Abundance. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the first chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning with verse 21 and proceeding through verse 28. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for the, he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is read and proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Matthew and Luke ease us into an introduction to Jesus. Matthew begins by tracing Jesus's lineage down through Joseph. Luke begins with the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist. Matthew tells us of wise men coming from the east, and Luke speaks of shepherds and angelic choirs, of Simeon and Anna, and of a 12-year-old Jesus astounding teachers in the temple. Then there's the Gospel of John. In the prologue of John's Gospel, we are taken back to the time before time began, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Such majesty, such mystery. But Mark's account of Jesus is different. He doesn't ease us into meeting Jesus. Within just a few short verses, John the Baptist appears in the wilderness proclaiming a message of repentance. Jesus bursts onto the scene and is baptized, then driven into the wilderness for 40 days, where he's tempted. Then we learn of John's arrest and the simultaneous beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And he comes announcing the good news that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. He calls his first disciples, and before we can even catch our breath, we learn that Jesus entered a synagogue in Capernaum and began to teach. God in Christ bursts forth in Mark in just an instant, and heaven and earth are forever changed. Imagine 
the fullness of God and of humanity meeting us in the person of Jesus. Imagine all the power and love of God on display for all creation. Imagine the unimaginable wonder of it all. For centuries, theologians have done just that, but have found that mere words fail to describe the indescribable. Is there any wonder then that the people in Capernaum were astounded at Jesus's teaching? Now, Mark does not give any indication about what Jesus taught in the synagogue in these verses, but I believe given the context, it is not hard to imagine that Jesus was there proclaiming the kingdom of God that day in the synagogue. That phrase, however, was nothing new because those in the synagogue that day would have known their history. They would have known how God had chosen Abraham and Sarah to give birth to God's chosen people and how God had kept covenant with their descendants, how God had led the nation of Egypt or nation out of Egypt and into the promised land and how God had raised up a shepherd by the name of David to be king and how God had promised that a descendant of David would sit on the throne of Israel forever. So after the collapse and destruction of the kingdom of Israel, the people were looking for a Messiah who would restore that kingdom. But Jesus gave the phrase, the kingdom of God, a new meaning. He spoke not about military campaigns that would overthrow Rome, but the reign of God, in which God was intimately present and active in the lives of humanity, and in which the powers of sin and death would be utterly destroyed. The kingdom of God has come near, he proclaimed. And the question that implies is, do we have the strength to be vulnerable to God's reign. What do I mean by that? Well, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue that day, a man with an unclean spirit appeared. Unclean spirit describes his condition well, because the word unclean comes from the language of the holiness or purity codes of Judaism. Thus, Things that are unclean are considered out of place. And the unclean spirit is out of place in a world that belongs to God because it constrains part of God's creation. It imprisons one whom God wills to be free. Now, traditionally, this unclean spirit has been described as a demon, even though the word demon does not appear in this passage. Little wonder then that this spirit cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? And the implied answer to that question is a resounding yes, because any healing would have illustrated Jesus's God-given authority, but an exorcism had additional symbolic force. One of the most cherished hopes associated with the coming of God's kingdom was the expectation that the forces of evil would be rendered powerless. So Jesus teaches the kingdom of God by expelling an unclean spirit. And so we can truly say that Christ has come to shatter the demonic designs on the world. He has come to free us from the chains of evil. He has come to enable us to be truly vulnerable to the love and grace of God without fear or anxiety. Christ has come to restore that intimate relationship that existed prior to humanity's fall. He has come to tell us that we need not keep up appearances because God sees us as we truly are and as we will one day be, and God loves us. This is not a story in which we are invited to imitate Jesus. There is no go and do likewise in these verses. Rather, it is a story in which we are invited to be amazed by our Lord's authority and power as the Holy One of God who ushers in God's kingdom by casting out evil so that we might be free to live unhindered 
in God's presence. But the fact that Mark tells us that this man with an unclean spirit was in the synagogue should clue us into the fact that this detail is far too significant to ignore. A rabbi once pointed out to me that unclean in this context would have carried with it the notion of dying. So we might say that this man was possessed by a dying spirit. Of course, that could feed into the traditional interpretation that this was a demon, but it could also mean that this man felt threatened by Jesus' preaching. After all, there is that old cliche about being better to deal with the devil you know than the one you don't. So I began to wonder if maybe the real issue at play in this passage is the destruction of things as we have come to know them and love them. Since Advent, we have been wrestling with what the coming of God in Christ means. And one thing we have noted is that when God comes to us, we cannot go back to business as usual. And yet somehow deep down, I think there is a desire in each of us to do just that. We want the blessings of God without the call to be a blessing to others. We want to receive the good news as long as it doesn't make any demands on us. We want grace for us and those like us, but we aren't so sure what to do with the God who is gracious to the just and the unjust. There are strong, or there is a strong desire to have God in our lives, as long as we can keep living our lives on our terms. But it doesn't work that way. God in Christ comes to transform all of our lives, not just the parts we pick and choose. The kingdom of God has come near. So like many, Maybe deep down we question, like the unclean spirit, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? You mean to tell me, Jesus, that you meant what you said about much being expected from those to whom much has been given? You mean that all those times you made reference to justice for the poor, you were not just offering up suggestions? You mean that love of God and love of neighbor really do apply to each and every one of us? Do you mean to say we cannot say God bless America as if God would bless no one else and then pursue policies both domestically and on the world stage that are immoral, unjust, and anything but a blessing to others? Do you mean to say that the institutional church, which has been propped up on centuries of hierarchical abuse in order to maintain the status quo, really isn't glorifying or enjoying God forever? Do you really mean that if we are to see a new heaven and a new earth, then we must allow the old heaven and the old earth to pass away? Is that what you really mean? For some, that may sound like the death knell to life as we know and love it. But to those with ears to hear, it is the doorway to life and that in abundance. And at the end of the day, I would rather entrust my life to the one who intimately knows and loves me than to anyone or anything else. For in that one, all authority in heaven and on earth resides. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return our God, to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which again will be taken electronically this week. Head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Head to the Donate Now link that's on the top right-hand corner of the webpage, and you can uh, donate using um, uh, debit or credit cards. If you would like to pay by check or money order, you can mail those uh, tithes to Central Presbyterian Church, 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, uh, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves, our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns. Um, this week, uh, we lost one of the pillars of our church, uh, Mr. David Perdue. Um, they uh, had his uh, funeral service uh, in the sanctuary of the church uh, this past Friday. And the uh, ladies of the church um, were gracious enough to provide a meal for the family following the, um, following the service. Uh, Mr. Purdue was a uh, beloved member of the church, and uh, his presence uh, will be felt uh, mightily uh, in the weeks, uh, days, and months uh, to come. Please continue to keep the Purdue family in your prayers in the coming days. Um, we have um, a praise report. Uh, Brandy Castleberry, who has been battling cancer, who is a friend of the Judkins, she used to uh, work for them at Keepsakes, um, uh, announced on Facebook this week that she is now cancer-free. Uh, that is fantastic news. Um, she'll continue to, um, uh, she finished her chemo treatments this week, and uh, she'll be uh, continuing to uh, visit the doctor for the, uh, to make sure she's immunocompromised currently. Um, hopefully she'll... Um, Nothing uh, horrible will happen here in the coming days, uh, and we pray for her continued um, healing uh, from uh, cancer, and um, and pray that she continues to be cancer free in the coming and uh, days and months and years. Um, we also continue to pray for Haley Chandler, uh, who is going through uh, chemotherapy of her own uh, for her uh, for her cancer diagnosis. Um, we also continue to pray for Judy Jacobs, uh, who is a friend, another friend of Jane Judkins, um, who is also uh, dealing with a cancer diagnosis. Um, we want to continue to keep uh, Tim, Carrie, and Tyler Brown in our prayers. Um, they are friends of, of my wife's and I. Um, they are all dealing with COVID um, diagnoses. Uh, Carrie is uh, actually recovered enough to go back to work now. Um, her husband, Tim, is uh, in the ICU at JRMC and not doing very well at all. Uh, they've placed him on a ventilator, and, um, and uh, he, is, he is in real trouble. So we need to continue to keep that family in our prayers. Um, we also need to keep uh, Greg Turchi in our prayers. Um, she is um, her, Jessica Munn's, uh, he's Jessica Munn's uh, former father-in-law. Um, he is dealing with a COVID diagnosis as well. Um, also, uh, I ask that you keep uh, Alfonso Hill, uh, Mr. Hill, uh, and his wife, I should say, in our prayers. Um, Mr. Hill works with me in the IT department at ADC. Um, he was spent some time in the ICU the past week um, with a COVID diagnosis. He has uh, actually gotten out of the ICU, even though he's still hospitalized. But now his wife is in the ICU, so we need to continue to keep the Hill family in our prayers. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, 
we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please continue to keep the uh, Brown family, the Hill family, uh, Judy Jacobs, uh, and uh, Haley Chandler uh, in your care. Um, we know that they're, they're dealing with very various medical issues. Uh, we also want to continue to keep Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers as he's dealing with uh, medical issues. Um, we want, uh, we ask that you provide the doctors the wisdom and the courage uh, to uh, heal these people uh, from, from their various diagnoses. Uh, we ask that you continue to be uh, with their families as they uh, protect themselves and pray for healing for those, those uh, their family members. Um, we ask that you be with the family of Mr. Purdue at this uh, trying time. Uh, we are, we are, we are happy and 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 we know that he is with you in heaven. And we ask that you uh, bring comfort to uh, to the family during this t their time of loss and our time of loss as well. Uh, we want to uh, we want to praise you for the healing of Brandy Castleberry. Uh, we thank you for for taking the cancer away from her and, and, and putting her on the path to recovery. Uh, we also want to continue to, to ask that, that you expedite the, the, the deployment of the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, that you heal those who are sick with the disease, that you protect those who are in, in the transmissions path, uh, that you, um, give grace to those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 over the last year and uh, that you uh, continue to um, protect our, our church and our, our family and friends uh, from COVID-19 in the coming days. We also ask that you continue to uh, bless this nation and our world through these troubling times, that we hear your will and are not afraid to do your will in, the, in, in our world. Uh, I know that there are times where it's very difficult to take that first step and, 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 take, and have the courage to do what you will us to do in this world. But we need to understand that uh, even if we take a first step that is incorrect, that you will be there to guide us and put us in the right direction. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace. To, sh to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.